Hi everyone, it's Peter Schiff. This is Tuesday, uh, March 16th, 2010. Well, the dollar was broadly weaker today, uh, basically down against all the currencies. The Canadian dollar made a new 52-week high. That actually has been the strongest currency recently. Gold was up better than $20 an ounce. Oil was up better than $2 a barrel. And, you know, as I wrote in my commentary last week, to me it looks like the dollar is uh, topping out and getting ready for another rather precipitous uh, fall. The dollar index has been trading above and below uh, the 80 level, today closing below uh, 80. But I think it is looking very toppy, and I do expect the dollar uh, to uh, begin to fall. I think that this has ominous implications for the U.S. economy, in direct contrast to Nobel laureate Paul Krugman, who happened to have an opinion piece in the New York Times this week, that I really wanted to discuss uh, in some detail, and I, I'm planning on addressing this particular piece in my weekly commentary that appears on my Europac website. So make sure and look for that later in the week uh, to read uh, some of my thoughts as I put them into a more concise uh, format. But let me just first read one of the, the paragraphs. Before I do that, I mean, one of the things that Krugman gets right in this piece is he mentions the fact that Chinese currency is undervalued, and as a result of that, it is causing problems for the global economy. About that, he's right, but he doesn't really understand what the problems are and how things are going to be resolved once the Chinese currency is ultimately revalued. You know, he did win the Nobel Prize, and, you know, they give out Nobel Prizes for excellence in economics. You know, if they ever, you know, took away Nobel Prizes for uh, something that, that uh, shows a complete lack of understanding of economics, certainly Paul Krugman would be the first candidate uh, where the commission actually asked for their Nobel Prize back. In fact, I think after this opinion piece, he should return the Nobel Prize because he actually has no business having one. You know, I, I really would love to debate, debate Paul Krugman on this topic anytime, anywhere. Uh, so if somehow he actually sees his video blog and 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 wants to defend himself, you know, have at it. I'd love uh, uh, to debate him in any in any forum on this subject. But anyway, let's uh, take a look at his piece. I've got it over to the side, so I've got to look away for a second. Here's one of the paragraphs from his uh, op-ed, please. Um, what you have to ask is, what would happen if China tried to sell a large share of its U.S. Treasuries? Would interest rates soar? Short-term interest rates wouldn't change. They're being kept near zero by the Fed, which won't raise rates until the unemployment rate comes down. Long-term rates might rise slightly. Remember, this is what would happen if China dumped their treasuries. Long-term rates might rise slightly, but they're mainly determined by market expectations of future short-term rates. No, they're not. I mean, he's completely clueless. Long-term interest rates are about expectation of inflation. And if, and if our creditors perceive that the Fed is being too loose, that they're keeping short-term interest rates too low, then long-term interest rates are going to rise. Krugman has that completely wrong. Then he finishes the paragraph. Also, the Fed could offset any interest rate impact of a Chinese pullback by expanding its own purchases of long-term bonds. Now, that's where he really goes off the deep end. What Paul Krugman is suggesting is that it's okay if China doesn't want to buy our bonds because the Federal Reserve can buy them. We can just print money. Well, obviously, we can't do that. There is a huge difference between having legitimate buyers of our bonds and just having the Fed monetize the debt. You know, when the Chinese government buys our bonds, it's the Chinese money supply that grows. But when the Federal Reserve buys our bonds, it's our money supply that grows. There is a huge difference. You know, if what Krugman is saying is right, if it really doesn't matter if there's any demand for your bonds, if nations could just print money and and it's the same thing, well then there would then nobody would ever have runaway inflation. The Zimbabwe economy would be in great shape right now. And what Paul one of the other things that Paul Krugman doesn't understand is it wouldn't just be China dumping our debt. If the Federal Reserve actually started to do what Krugman suggested and cranked up the printing presses to buy the bonds that the Chinese wanted to sell. Everybody would be selling, the Japanese, the Saudis, the Europeans, the Latin Americans. Nobody would be, want to be left caught holding the bag. And, of course, what Paul Krugman doesn't understand is they don't actually have to dump our bonds. They simply have to not roll them over. Our national debt has a real short maturity on it. It's not like the Chinese actually have to sell. All they have to do is let their bonds mature or their notes and bills mature and simply ask for their money back. 
Now, let me read the next paragraph, because he really goes from the sublime to the ridiculous. He says, it's true that if China dumped its U.S. assets, the value of the dollar would fall against other major currencies, such as the euro. But that would be a good thing for the United States. So the dollar falling is a good thing to the United States. Here's what he says. Since it would make our goods more competitive and reduce our trade deficit. What goods is he talking about? You know, it, the way the trade deficit isn't going to come down, it's not going to be because our exports become more competitive. It's going to be because we're priced out of imports. The immediate result of a plunge in the dollar isn't going to be a surge of exports. It's going to be a collapse of imports, and that's not going to help our economy, the fact that we can't get access to all these uh, products uh, at, at a low cost. I mean, in the long run, of course, this has to happen. But um, uh, Krugman thinks it's a panacea. It's not. It's a, a painful, it's painful medicine that we have to swallow, but it's going to hurt us. It's not going to hurt the Chinese. Let me finish to what he has to say. Um, but that, but that would be a good thing for the United States since it would make our goods more competitive and reduce our trade deficit. On the other hand, it would be a bad thing for China, which would suffer large losses on its dollar holdings. In short, right now, America has China over a barrel, not the other way around. So let me get this straight. If the dollar collapses, China is going to take a hit on the dollars he own, that they own. But what about Americans? What about our hit? That's all we own is dollars. Our savings, our wages, they're all in dollars. China has a trillion dollars, but that's one part of its portfolio. The Chinese people have R&B. You know, their wages are in R&B. The bulk of their savings are in R&B. If the Chinese lose the value of their dollars, they still have all their productive capacity. They have working. They have all their factories. Yes, they will take a hit. They will find out that they've been vendor financing the United States for a long time. And so going forward, they won't do that anymore. But the bigger loss happens in the United States. We get wiped out. Yeah. You know, if you remember back from the dot com days, remember the companies that were vendor financing all the dot-com companies, the Cisco's, the Lucens, the Nortel's, that were lending these dot-coms money to buy their products. When the dot-com bubble burst, sure, these companies took a hit to their earnings, but they survived and prospered, uh, but all the dot-coms went under. That's what's going to happen here. This is a relationship that cannot persist. And the amazing thing is, and I, and I got into an argument about this earlier today with somebody, uh, who should know better. I mean, I think this is one of the things that, to me, you know, it's more insane that people think the way Krugman is about trade than people thought that real estate prices would never fall. But the idea that all of these economies, like China, that their economy is dependent on exports, it's not. It's dependent on production. Right? The fact that they choose to export their production, you know, that's actually their loss. They would be better off consuming their production, which they could easily do if the Chinese government would allow their currency to strengthen and the direct domestic price structures uh, to decline. People think that the Chinese are too poor to they don't. There's not enough demand in China to uh, support all their production. That's nonsense. Supply creates demand. The fact that the Chinese can produce that means they can consume. The fact that we can't produce, that means we shouldn't be able to consume. The only reason we can is because other productive nations are allowing us to do it by giving us their production and loaning us the money to pay for it. This is going to come to an end. Unfortunately, people like Paul Krugman still don't understand. They still can't connect the dots. They sense there's a problem, but they don't really understand it. They think that we have the Chinese over a barrel. Absolutely not. This idea that the Chinese are going to have to loan us money forever and that other countries are going to have to loan us money forever because they don't want to they don't want to lose money on their investments they are going to throw good money after bad in perpetuity that we can borrow money from the world with impunity that we can print all the money we want and it's not going to affect inflation it's not going to affect interest rates according to Paul Krugman as long as we have a high rate of unemployment we can print all the money we want interest rates won't go up inflation won't go up I got news for anybody who believes in this, including Krugman, they are in for a rude awakening. This, again, is even more irrational than the people who were saying that the dot-com era was a new era or that the, the real estate prices were justified by the fundamentals. They would go up forever. In the long-term scheme of things, when they write the history books about this period of time, this is going to be the one thing that people look at and say, I can't believe people were that dumb. It's like we look back at the Salem witch trials and don't understand how people could burn witches. This is how. It is the mass of popular delusions and the madness of crowds. Anyway, that's it for today. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.